Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I want to have a look at Casper. Now, before I start this video, I do want to say Casper was recommended down in the comments below. So if you guys ever want to see me do a video on an altcoin, just request it down below. I always love reading your comments, always love chatting to you guys. So if there's something you want to see, request it down below. I also saw there was a comment for Algorand, so that video will be out soon. I'll try my best. There are slowly more and more comments coming in, so it is becoming a little bit more difficult to sort of do your videos like same day or the next day. Um, but I'm honestly so grateful that people are talking to me. And, uh, uh, I love it. I, I love doing these videos and I love chatting to you guys. I love talking to fellow crypto enthusiasts and like smart people that know what they're doing. So no, request down in the comments, whatever you want, and I'll always do my best to make a video. And that Algorand video should be out by Sunday. I have a busy weekend, but you know, I'll try my best. Um, getting straight into Casper. I do want to also say that I've known about Casper for a very long time. And that's not because of its uh, brilliant price action. It's because Casper is a proof of, proof of work crypto. And I would be very into sort of mining cryptocurrencies. I love, I own a few ASICs and I love sort of fiddling around, tinkering with them, trying to make them as efficient as possible uh, with their electricity and while trying to keep my hardware errors down like I just I I love um, it's a total hobby of mine I love it and to be honest with you it's not even because of the money side of things like my miners haven't made me money in a long time I just love having this sort of hardware and also you know keeping the network more decentralized I try to keep either Bitcoin or Litecoin miners um, and I never got into Casper but I did hear about it at the time because there was a lot of hype when Casper launched um, you know, like, you know, a lot of cryptocurrencies once, well, not cryptocurrencies, miners, once Ethereum went proof of stake, there was suddenly a big power vacuum for all this um, hardware to be put to work. Um, there was nowhere for it to go. And I do think that sort of lines up with Casper because we can see this huge spike here happens around merge time. I think merge time was September, wasn't it? I think it was. I think it was September of 2022. But anyway, we see a big pump here and I'm sorry for the limited price action that we have on Casper. This was the best chart I could find. It's not much of an old coin anyway, but again, like it's only like a couple of years old. So we are basing our information off limited data. But anyway, like I said, Ethereum goes proof of stakes. So there's a lot of hardware and mining power that needs to go somewhere. A lot of it goes to Ethereum Classic, a lot of it goes to Bitcoin, a lot of it goes to this, that and the other, a lot of it goes to Casper. And I think that's what made a lot of proof of work cryptocurrencies rally because suddenly there was so much more hash rate going into them and hash rate usually cor correlates loosely to price. So when a lot of hash rate moves into a new cryptocurrency, we often see the cryptocurrency not do too well, to be honest with you because now it has so much more being produced. So again, supply, demand, um, you know, sort of outweighs, there's more supply than demand, so the price goes down. However, there is a sort of unique circumstance that we can get where if there is enough hype around a crypto, um, that is proof of work usually, or proof of stake, but usually proof of work, if there is enough hype, and usually a small cap like Casper was, and the ability to mine this crypto is limited, this can cause the price to go explosive. And this is exactly what happened with Casper this year. Now, I can't remember quite when they were launched, but there was an ASIC miner for Casper launched, I, I want to say March time. It could be to do with this rally here. But um, there was an ASIC miner for Casper. Uh, if you Google Ice River, I think it is, um, you'll see a load of videos pop up, especially on YouTube, about how profitable they are and this, that and the other. Um, Voscoin and Red Panda Mining um, did lots of videos on them back in the day and still do videos on them. Um, and this caused an explosive price move because the amount of miners were limited. There was only a few of them. Um, so a lot of people scrambled to get these miners. Not many people got them, but the people that did started making huge amounts of money because the efficiency that these miners were mining Casper at was like crazy, absolutely crazy. Like I remember when it first started, 
the, the reason I like I, I remember this so clearly is because it, it stood out to me so much. People were buying these ASICs, these ice rivers for two thousand dollars, I'll say. I think it was less, but somewhere around that price. And they were making eighty dollars a day on Casper. Eighty dollars a day. You pay two thousand and you make eighty dollars. So that's somewhere around two weeks not two weeks, three weeks, three and a half weeks and you'll break even. And then even if you wanted to sell it, you'll double your money. You know what I mean? It was crazy. And again, because there was such a limited supply of this, um, lots of people were scrambling to get the miners. But because they couldn't get the miners, they would buy the coin instead. So these people, because they don't have an opportunity to mine the coin, they go, okay, I'll buy the, I'll buy the coin instead. It's better than just not being exposed to it at all in their eyes. And this rallies, this pumps the coin up hugely. And now a lot of videos at the time as well were saying, well, these Casper miners can't be sustainable because the, you know, the, the, the daily profit rate on them is way too high. And, you know, like, you know, when you buy an ASIC miner, you expect to have to mine for at least two to three years before you break even, usually. And that depends on your electricity rate as well and uh, everything like this. So to have a crypto miner that would break even in a few days and continue to make you huge amounts of money daily, like, you know, it was absurd. It wasn't sustainable. And they were right because it wasn't sustainable, but but it didn't like go to nothing like we often see. The Casper miners return that is. Now it made it made it that GPU mining Casper was like basically impossible. Um, you kind of needed these ASICs to make any amount of money. Um, but again, it is interesting, and I think it does explain this price action, and I think it does explain how well this crypto is done. Again, Ice River is still releasing miners, but they're only releasing limited amounts. So, you know, when a new, better version of the Ice River, I think it was like K0 was the first one, K1, K2, each time they release a new one, everyone scrambles for these ASICs. And when they can't get their a the ASICs because they're all sold out, they buy Casper. And then the Casper price rallies, so people go, ooh, I should get some Casper because it's pumping, and so on, so on, so on, cascading effect. So I do think that is what's made most of Casper's good price performance. However, I will just compare it very quickly to sort of what we expected at the time, you know, what the market was doing when Casper was doing what. So we can see here before 2023, was a very poor year for crypto, but we see Casper, again, after the proof of stake, got a lot of hash rate, so it got a lot of money inflow, big pump, whatever. Uh, we have a big correction here. Uh, and this is leading up to sort of, uh, you know, FTX sort of time. Um, a decent rally into December, which is like almost immediately after FTX. Um, you know, so Casper didn't spend too much time being sad about that. Again, proof of work cryptocurrencies, they're kind of, not that they're immune to the general crypto space. A lot of times they feel the pain worse, but I think they hold up better because they're far more decentralized personally. Um, and I would sort of be in favor of proof of work, even if they are big energy consumptions, the real numbers are much lower than you think. And also it is just truly decentralized. And also a lot of it is green energy these days. So, but anyway, that's, you know, anyway, uh, Casper does well into the new year. Well, actually, it doesn't do well into the new year. Sorry, it has its rally before the new year. And then when the rest of the crypto market is sort of, well, also going down here, Casper goes down, we have our little rally. And then we sort of have a late new year move. Like a lot of coins literally exploded middle of January, early January. We saw big price action on basically every alt, every crypto, basically Bitcoin as well. All of them went parabolic. Casper uh, didn't until basically end of February. And that's when it really went explosive. And we can see that it actually put in, excuse me, put in a 500% move in under two months, which is crazy, a month and a half, uh, which is nuts. But again, not unheard of because it was a very low cap altcoin. And, uh, but again, very cool. This was probably on the news of some uh, Ice River a crypto miner being released, probably the first one, I'm not too sure. We then have a big correction. This is to be expected after something like this, especially when it's a crypto miner being released. Like ultimately what they do is create more 
uh, Casper that is in circulation. So it should result in some sort of a downward pullback, you know, a price correction. Uh, Casper got that, but then again, I don't know whether this was a new model of the Ice River coming out, but we saw a big move here. And then we saw a, a, a much smaller correction of about 35% down. Uh, so, and and then ever since, Casper has just kept going up. And I think it's because of this, this FOMO that is created around these miners, because they are so profitable. And even though like the first one that they release now isn't very profitable, I think it only makes like, you know, like seven quid a day, uh, which, you know, seven quid a day is still very good, but um, compared to its energy and all this, it's not the super best. Um, it's just very interesting to look at. I do think a lot of this price action is from the mining space, but again, feel free to disagree with me. Again, they sort of operated, Casper sort of operated very uh, basically within these support and resistance. And then we can see here, we had a sort of wedge that Casper was moving into, and then it completely exploded out of it and did like a 2X basically in a few days, which was crazy, really brilliant price performance. And this is why it's suddenly on everyone's radar as well, um, because you know a lot of people would be looking at coin market cap and checking uh, daily percentage moves and you know for everything that's not below the 500 coin market cap ranking, you know a, a, an altcoin that's actually got a somewhat semi-existent market cap, you know somewhere around like 500 thousand or above or something, you know. Uh, that's not really anything to be honest with you either, above a million. But you know what I'm saying, like they, they check for these price movements and they see Casper and then they buy Casper and then price keeps going up and more people notice, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. I do think we will have a correction here, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think this will be too long lived, um, but I do think we can go higher, just drawing a very uh, like basic line here. We can see that this is basically parallel with the support and it does seem to be acting uh, as a decent resistance at the moment now where the casper breaks above i am not sure but there's a good chance that it could again with all coins like this it's very volatile like for me to say it's going to go up only is impossible and honestly like deceiving to say like i, w I wouldn't ever say that oh yeah this cryptocurrency 100 percent only going to go up i might say stuff like long term i can see casper going up I can probably see something like that happening. I think now that it's gained enough attention, I think it will always have enough people to sort of um, be mining the coin, be selling the coin. There'll be some interest generated in whatever the Casper Foundation decides to do. I think now that it's been in the spotlight, there's enough people that will uh, keep their ear to Casper and maybe pick some up every now and then. So it's. I think it, there's a chance it will do well. And I think it will continue to do well, like it is doing really well. Again, looking at these cryptos that have sort of gone against my theory of Bitcoin being the best thing to hold in a bear market, if you'd have held Casper, you would have done very well. And if we actually look at the BTC pair, we see something very similar to this. But before I do get into this, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Fairdesk. Fairdesk is an exchange, and if you're interested, you can click the link in the description for a 5% 5 deposit bonus. And with no KYC required, you can start trading straight away. But, um, and thank you, Fairdesk, for sponsoring this video. Um, but again, getting into BTC, we can see that Casper has basically consistently gone up. This, like these last few months now, have very limited data. This is only from August of 2023, which is really annoying. I was looking around, but there are like no charts for, um, uh, you know, Casper and Bitcoin. Again, just because it's such a new coin, um, there's not much info that's, Again, it's a new coin and it was such a low market coin that, you know, not a lot of data has been collected or not a lot of pairs have been made. So we can see it is just basically a, a move up and these last few week, this last week, basically, Casper has exploded like we have seen with a lot of altcoins, um, but Casper especially doing um, very, very well. But really, that's all we can draw from this Bitcoin chart that Casper these last few months has, yeah gone up against Bitcoin. So again, maybe it's sort of time for me to take a look at my philosophy of uh, Bitcoin during bear markets, alts during bull. 
maybe I should sort of be checking different possibilities. But again, I kind of do always believe that there is an exception to the rule and Casper was the exception to this rule. Um, I think that's kind of everything I wanted to say. Again, since beginning of this year, Casper has done well. We haven't seen this with the whole crypto space. We've seen it with Bitcoin, a very similar looking move here with Casper and Bitcoin, just Casper a few months later, uh, a, a pullback in the summer. Again, a lot of cryptos did this. And then like a sort of uh, recovery rally again that we saw with Bitcoin um, after this summer where a lot of altcoins sort of maybe had a little pitiful little pump and maybe a few months later eventually had a nice rally. Casper and Bitcoin have both gone up during this time and Casper's had pullbacks when Bitcoin hasn't. But Casper's also had pumps when Bitcoin hasn't. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, give or take. I mean, this last pump, like these last few days, Bitcoin went from 35K, or sorry, from like 34K to 37K, uh, which was, you know, a good move. But Casper has moved double basically its money in the last week, which is very hard to beat. And again, double your money in a week is uh, not something to ever scoff at. Uh, in terms of where I think it's headed, I do think we're sort of, coming back to the lower range of this support if I bring this line out a little bit more on this support um, it will probably line up pretty well with somewhere around here where we touch this line we can see that when Casper rallies it it kind of goes more sideways than down so um, uh, yeah like you know that's something that we might expect here so we might move out this way or we might have a sharp sell-off because this has been such a sharp pump and we might come down to a lower value. Again, it's kind of what you think the crypto space will get will do. I said this in basically all of my altcoin videos, but ultimately, especially when we have like very li limited information here, it kind of depends what you think the crypto space will do. Uh, if you think that ultimately we're in bullish times only now, uh, I, you know, you might want to pick some up uh, when we have a small little pullback here, because you know, in your eyes, Casper will only go up. Um, if you think that the halving might spell a bit of trouble for some cryptocurrencies and the majority of the crypto space, you might want to hang off and we might see Casper return below this line where it's been rejected multiple times until it finally broke up. We might see Casper return. I don't know if we will. I think we'll probably come back down to this level though at some point. But again, maybe not. Maybe the hype will just continue all the way into the bull market and Casper will do brilliantly. Um, I honestly not too sure, but um, yeah, I think that's about everything I have to say on the cryptocurrency. Um, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, comment down below what altcoin you want next. Also, let me know if you're holding Casper. Do you guys mine cryptocurrency as well? That would be something I'd be very interested in if there are people that are mining cryptocurrency and also sort of involved in the charts. Because I think if you're mining, you do have to be semi involved in the charts because you have to know you, you have to have an expectation for the cryptocurrency that you're mining and where it's going to go uh, if you're doing it for you know money of course which like realistically most people do like you know the money is kind of uh, what brings a lot of people into it and uh, it's what, what brought me into it but also my sort of love for computers and uh, that sort of uh, thing is also I found much more rewarding um, but anyway let me know in the comments down below, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and peace.